I'm, I'm Alex Cooney. For the last 12 years, I've worked as a police officer for the New South Wales Police Force. Um, in that time, I've always done extra to my duties. Um, when I started, I, I did the recruit show. Um, I'd performed extra roles. I'd always relieved high roles. I'd run operations for police. Um, I'm really pro-police. We want police, we need police. Um, and that's why I'm here today, to let police know that we need them. Um, I've had a lot of police come to me um, worried about what they're being asked to do at the moment. Unfortunately, no one within the police can actually speak um, and that's, that's my role. I'm, I'm here to speak for them. October last year, I wrote a letter to the police commissioner because I was worried that what we we're doing was unjustified and unlawful and it was eroding the police relationship with the community. We we're becoming divided. It was becoming police first, the citizens. Um, people are more scared of getting a fine than they are of an alleged virus. Um, that was an evidence-based letter I wrote. Um, it, it shows that what we're enforcing that was not justified. COVID is not what we've been told it is. Um, on top of that, we were breaching laws. COVID's not about health, it's about control. It's everything other than health, you know. You know, health's about you connecting. It's about being outside. It's about your interactions. Um, it's not about isolation. Uh, so, so I felt someone within the police needed to bring that up. Um, no one had. I waited a long time before I released that letter. We, uh, I was waiting, 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 and basically got to the point where I couldn't sleep at night, not doing anything. Um, I approached Ad Advocate Me uh, to, with what I had and asked for their assistance putting a letter together. Uh, we came up with a plan that we would make, do an open letter and make it public um, because they believed that it would be suppressed internally. So my intent behind the letter was to notify the commissioner and all police in on it, uh, all police within New South Wales, um, of what we've got and that we may be acting unlawfully. So I, I sent it via email internally. Now that was um, suppressed after six hours and taken off, so not a lot of people saw it. But what did happen with Advocate Me making it public is it caught traction. Um, a lot of members of the public saw it. Um, with that, we have had literally people come up crying, going, thank you, I thought there was no hope. They were aware of the tyranny that's been imposed on them um, and they thought that all police were out to get them. It hit a point where I had so many police come to me not knowing what to do feeling someone needed to say something um, and I was stuck basically under non-disclosure agreements or gag orders that I couldn't move on. I couldn't talk to these police, I couldn't talk to members of the community um, and I couldn't do anything publicly because of these orders. So I made the decision to resign from the police force with a new set of lockdowns so that I could actually speak for the police who are still serving. Um, I couldn't face up as a police officer to enforce this tyranny on the population knowing what I knew behind it. Therefore, what we're imposing upon the communities was unjustified. Um, further to that, um, we're breaching laws in imposing these things upon the community, these rules. Um, it was unjustifiable and unlawful, and the police were being used as a tool for political and other, other background agendas to impose on the community. Um, I felt someone needed to be the tip of the spear to break that ice. Um, all I wanted to do was plant the seed. The problem with the police and the problem that I'm seeing and the phone calls that I'm getting from police, they don't want to enforce this stuff. They are part of the community. So enforcing this on the community, they're enforcing them on themselves. If they're going to enforce this stuff, you know, they're, they're removing their own freedoms by doing so. Um, you know, most of the police now understand that COVID is not what we're being told it is. And they're frustrated with it. They're over it. A lot of them want to actually leave. Um, but again, they're in a situation where they might have a mortgage or something and don't want to. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of scared police out there at the moment. Um, fearful of where we're headed. Um, fearful of what they're being asked to do. Um, not wanting to do it. Um, that's not why they join the police. They join there to help the community, to be there for 
members of the community when they need police. That is why, that's what gives them purpose. Um, this is just creating a divide and the police themselves are feeling isolated and they're really struggling with it. So many are off on stress leave since the COVID. Um, it's clear as to what's happening to them. I've been aware for a long time that, and a lot of police are, that what is displayed on mainstream media is false. Um, it's, it's being able to read mainstream media and say, what are they trying to get at? Um, and looking deep, they're, they're pushing COVID so hard on, on the population. I went the other way and looked underneath. And what I found was a whole world of doctors and scientists, thousands and thousands of them, who are putting forward facts that have been ignored. Um, mainstream media have a lot to answer for. They're pushing this agenda. They are a tool that is, you know, they call it programming. There's a reason they call it programming. I'm not sure where the mandatory vax comes in with the police, what the agendas are behind it. Now, this, within New South Wales, it's the commissioner who is deemed it mandatory that the troops get vaccinated by the 30th of this month. Now, that hasn't come from government, that hasn't come from anywhere else, that's just a commissioner decision. Most members of the police are lovely, even the high ranking ones. No, there, there are a lot of police who do not want these vaccines. Um, I have more than 170 in New South Wales that I've contact with who are um, adamantly not wanting the vaccine. I'm aware of many, many, many others who have already had the first shot who didn't want it, but they feel like they need the employment. It's complete coercion into having this medical procedure. I put it down to essentially they are being groomed to be injected. What you need to do as police is start questioning. You need to start questioning the orders and the directions you've been giving, given. You know, do things honourably. Don't be belligerent. Don't put yourselves in a position if you're, if you're worried. But you can ask the questions. Um, what we're going to do with Advocate Me is provide interpretations of the legislation which have been through lawyers, barristers, even police prosecutors to be solid interpretations of the legislation and the law that they can then take to their superior. You know, they can simply ask, ask if it's a constable, ask the sergeant. Sarge, it's my comprehension of the legislation that we're acting unlawfully. Can you please follow this up for me? You know, it's the role of that constable to act lawfully. In doing that, you're not going to breach any, any internal policies. You're doing things honourably for the organisation. You're not going to get offside. You're not going to um, find yourself in hot water. And you're going to have an impact because that sergeant is going to have to take that somewhere. He's going to have to take it to an inspector or higher up. You know, before you know it, you may just cease the whole area from enforcing these rules upon the community. It could be that simple. And police just have to, have to start thinking rather than follow orders, start questioning. And you know, there's nothing wrong with asking the question.